Ring, ring, ring. Hello? Have you ever thought about your vocal first impression? How you sound when you first say hello? In this video, I'm gonna change the way you say hello forever. I spend a lot of time on the phone. I always wish I could sound more powerful, increase my vocal presence, make my phone calls more impactful. In our human behavior research lab, The Science of People, we did a fascinating experiment on vocal power. In this video, I have some incredible tips for you on how you can benefit from every single phone conversation. Number one, you have a vocal first impression. When most of us think about having an important phone interview or virtual meeting, we usually prepare for our answers and think about great things to talk about. But this fact blew my mind. People judge how trustworthy you are within half a second. Research shows that your hello might matter more than prepared clever anecdotes or great answers. Your vocal first impression happens the moment you answer the phone and say hello or this is Vanessa, or one time I called a big VIP and he answered, speak, yikes. Here's the problem. We are usually most nervous in the first few seconds. So our hello comes out breathy, high pitched or nervous sounding. Number two, people can hear your mood. I wanted to run an experiment to test the power of our hellos. In the first part of our experiment, we had the same participants record six different versions of their typical, hello? We wanted to see if the very same person sounded different. First, we had them record a normal hello. This was the control. So however they normally answered the phone, hello? Second, we had them think of something that made them happy and then make a happiness microexpression and record their happy hello, hello? Third, we had them think of something that made them sad, make a sadness microexpression, and record their sad hello. Hello? Fourth, we had them think of something that made them angry, make an anger microexpression, and record their angry hello. Hello? Fifth, we had them think of something that made them feel powerful and stand in a power pose, something really broad. Then we had them record, hello? The last hello we had them do was a normal control hello again. What do you think happened? The results were clear. The very same person sounded incredibly different in each version of their recording. Let's see if you can hear the differences. I will play you two recordings from the experiment. Which one is the happy hello? Is it A? Hello. Or is it B? Hello. Which do you think sounded happier? If you guessed B, you would be right. Let's play again. Which of these two hellos is the angry hello? Is it A? Hello. Or is it B? Hello. Which one sounded more irritable to you? Go with your gut. If you picked B, you would be right again. You can clearly hear the differences between these two recordings. Our mood and our body language really does change the sound of our voice. And this is important because it means people can hear your mood. Number three, how to sound more confident. The next part of our experiment is where things got even more interesting. We took the recordings and asked readers like you to rate them on likability. We had each participant play a clip and then choose from three answers. After listening to a clip, we asked each person to choose, I like this person a lot, I like this person a little, or I do not like this person. Can you guess which hello was rated as most likable? Was it A, happy hello, B, sad hello, C, angry hello, D, power posing hello, or E, the normal hellos? There was a clear winner for likability. If you answered A, the happy hello, you would be right. It was by far the most likable. We were actually surprised by this. We guessed the power posing hello would do best. Boy, were we wrong. Even the participants' normal hellos did better than the power posing hellos. Happiness came in first. Anger rated the absolute worst. This means if you're having a bad day, just got a bad email while waiting on hold, 
or are rushing around in traffic while making calls, this irritability can translate into your voice and make you extremely unlikable. Number four, my favorite voice exercise. If you want to sound like a leader, you have to speak with your maximum resonance point. This is where your voice is most relaxed and portrays confidence. Be sure to watch our video on finding your maximum resonance point next. This is my favorite vocal exercise. Number five, find something to smile about. I have a few final tips for you. When speaking on the phone, always, always find something to smile about. Genuine happiness is better than a fake smile any day. Don't check email right before getting on a call or while waiting on hold. You're bound to see something you don't like. This risks a possible anger expression. Pull up the person's LinkedIn profile picture while you speak to them. Sometimes we have trouble connecting over the phone. If you simulate the feelings of being in person, you're more likely to smile more and use hand gestures. This warms up your voice. Never ever answer the phone in a bad mood. Remember, your vocal power is incredibly important. Before you answer your next phone call, smile broad, take a deep breath, and give someone a nice hello. Ring, ring. Ciao. Ring, ring. Hola. Ring, ring. Ni hao. Oh wait, don't go. You might also like these videos. Hmm, that one's really good. Watch it now.